Number four, Thor Love and Thunder. Yes, the fourth entry in the Thor series, if you can call it that. And while I don't really know much about the plot to this movie, they're keeping it rather hush-hush, but I can only assume a couple of things. Thor's in it. I mean, it wouldn't be called Thor without our main hero character, God, whatever you would call him. And his love, Jane Foster, played by Natalie Portman. That's all I can assume there. I'm only going to assume it's going to go between Earth and Asgard. Oh wait, that's right, Asgard was destroyed in the last one, spoiler alert there. But yeah, I'd be interested to see how this turns out, and I'm assuming it follows up with Avengers Endgame, just like all the other films coming out nowadays. Don't let us down again, Marvel. You certainly haven't with the last couple of movies you did. Mostly. Number 3. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Yes, the next entry in the Aquaman series, which I did enjoy the hell out of the first one, despite a few flaws and some CG, which may have been a little overused, but it was really action-packed. Jason Momoa was a great casting choice as the main half-human, half-fish superhero, and I'm expecting a lot more out of this one, with, of course, if you saw the mid credit scene, Black Manta, our main supervillain, who's obviously going to come back and get revenge for the death of his father in this one, I can only assume, as well as some of the other cast members returning, like Patrick Wilson as Ocean Master, his evil half-brother, and the main villain in the previous film, who I'm assuming is going to step down and let Black Manta take that spot, so we can only expect a lot of action, above and underwater, and see what this Lost Kingdom is all about. So again, the plot is rather hush-hush, but hey, the less we know, the better. Number 2, Avatar 2. Yes, all I could say is finally. At least so far, as I know, it is releasing this year in December to be exact. Around the same week, actually, as Aquaman 2, The Lost Kingdom. And James Cameron is going to be back to direct, as he was always going to be with the sequel that he planned for many, many years. And I'm assuming that if it took this long, it's got to be good. I mean, yes, I know... The first film, you can agree, was a bit overrated, heavy on CGI, not the most original plot, but come on, it's gorgeous to look at for the most part. It's not the most ugly looking CGI, and I enjoyed it still for what it was, despite its unoriginal plot that we've pretty much seen in Dances with Wolves and Pocahontas, and I'm interested to see how this plot will turn out. I know that obviously the first one was one of the biggest money makers, and James Cameron is a big money maker with a lot of his movies. I mean, Titanic, first two Terminator movies, Aliens. I mean, and he's no stranger to sequels, which he's done great with. I mean, Terminator 2 and Aliens were awesome. So let's hope for the sake you could do the same with this one. As far as I know, our main character, Sam Worthington, is returning as Jake Sully, who, as we saw the end of the first one, spoiler alert, he is officially 100% Navi can walk again and so forth, and even some new cast members like Cliff Curtis, you probably remember from the Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw movie as well as a couple others, and even Kate Winslet who had a bit of a run-in when she did Titanic with James Cameron, but thankfully I guess they kind of buried the hatchet and decided to cast her in this movie despite his rather rough directing style. I mean, he is a very tough director, but give him credit. His movies are great, and I'm hoping for the sake that this one could still continue his success of being one of the best directors. So, don't let us down. Make this return to Pandora worth the wait. Even though, of course, there's going to be several sequels in the works, but hey, let's take it one step at a time here, shall we? And the number one movie that I'm anticipating for 2022? The Batman. Yes, the Cape Crusader is back and looks as badass as ever, played by this time Robert Pattinson. Yes. Let's ignore the Twilight movies, shall we? And just remember, he was also in the movie Tenet, which is, I know, a confusing, complex, but very interesting movie directed by Christopher Nolan. So, any actor can redeem themselves, and he looks to be with this film as this role, as the Playboy Billionaire slash Cape Crusader, which I know as Bruce Wayne, he does look a little off to me. But as Batman, he looks as badass as ever. Back to doing what he's best known for, kicking some ass, driving the Batmobile in the gloomy, dark, and rainy Gotham City. I mean, that's what the city is well known for. It's crime, which Batman is in, to stop and put an end to and bring justice to as well. I mean, you're going to have uh, several villains in this played by some rather interesting, but I think well-casted actors. Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle slash Catwoman. Paul Dano as the Riddler. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for this because I was disappointed after that crappy Schumacher interpretation of him played by Jim Carrey, which, don't get me wrong, I like Jim Carrey, but 
let's face it, he was no Riddler. And no, you can't count the ones from the original Campy TV series, even though those are good, but come on. We want a more serious, badass, darker Riddler. And this one looks to be in the right direction, as well as Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Not sure he'll, if he'll do any better, not to compare him with the Danny DeVito version, but I think he'll do fine, as well as John Turturio as Carmine Falcone, Jeffrey Wright as Officer James Gordon, and Andy Serkis as Alfred, Bruce Wayne's trusty butler. Okay, I'm a bit iffy on that choice too as well, but I think he'll do just fine. And I think this film will be fine as well. After all, it's going to be directed by Matt Reeves, who's had a pretty good history with reboots. I mean, he did, of course, the sequels to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and the third entry, War for the Planet of the Apes, which I will admit was a little depressing, but trust me, it was really good. And I think we're in good hands with this one. I mean, come on. It's not like we have Michael Bay directing this one. I mean, that I could see is a problem, and would definitely get a lot of hate mail from fans, myself included, because, let's face it, anything this guy gets his hands on, any popular franchise, pretty much destroys it. So, anyway, that's my list right there, people. And you're probably also wondering, wait, what about Marvel's The Marvels, which is the sequel to Captain Marvel, maybe not the best entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but yes, I would have included it, except this one, and Indiana Jones 5, which I know the fourth Indiana Jones was not the greatest, and, well, they're giving this to a new director, a new director who I have faith in and can redeem this one, but, as you know, those two are being pushed to next year, 2023, as well as a few others, but... That could mean that they want to put the finishing touches on them and make them a lot better. So, that's my list right there, people. Until next time, Happy New Year.